of that jetliner over the Ukraine, just one of the international crises facing the White House. And even members of the president's own party are taking issue with the way that he is choosing to deal with them. And you lead by example. Right now we're leading by being, we don't really we're know. Not we're not leading. Right. We're not leading, really. We're just getting pulled in all different directions and there's no clear, there's, it's, there's not a clarity of who is the United States of America and what do they stand for? And that's a Democrat. Senator Jerry Moran, a Republican from Kansas, chairs the National Republican Senatorial Committee, and he joins me now. Oh, great to have you, sir. So that's Senator Joe Manchin is saying that somebody in his own party, President Obama, is failing to lead. What do you make of that? Well, I'm very uh, pleased that Senator Manchin has the courage to tell the truth. I appreciate that very much. Uh, it certainly is clear to me that our country doesn't have a foreign policy. Uh, what we say, uh, we don't necessarily mean. When the president speaks, uh, he is not listened to. Uh, and so we don't have the role to play in the world. We've stepped back and created a circumstance in which there's a vacuum that the United States no longer fi fills. And it creates this opportunity for others to step in and create the chaos that we see around the world from Ukraine to Syria to Israel. Uh, it's just a, a circumstance that uh, we need to provide leadership in and on that uh, when we speak, no one's paying attention now because the president doesn't mean what he says. So if you were advising the president, what would you tell him to say with regard to Putin and the Russian situation? Well, first of all, I would say it's, it's late to be able to tell the truth. When the president spoke, for example, in Syria and drew the line, uh, it turned out that he really didn't mean it. And so it's difficult for the president now to gain credibility in the, this latest crisis. And there'll be more to come, and we've had a series in between, but the president's words have never meant anything, so hard for him to recover. Uh, what seems to me to be missing now in Ukraine is certainly the demand of the United States that the bodies, the wreckage site, the investigation occurs, the bodies be returned home, that the humanitarian efforts take place uh, at the site of this plane crash. But also what we need is stronger enforcement of the sanctions that are in place. And what that requires is uh, countries of Europe to step in and work side by side with the United States. In fact, to take the lead right. because they have greater leverage economically with, the, uh, with Russia than, than the United States yeah. does. And unfortunately, more to lose as well on an economic front. And maybe that's why they haven't thus far. All right, Senator, in the meantime, back in a domestic issue, we're awaiting confirmation hearings now for the man the White House wants to head the embattled Veteran Affairs Department. As Robert McDonald gets ready to testify before a Senate panel, that's gonna happen next hour. Well, this comes amid word of a possible breakthrough, Senator, on the bipartisan legislation to overhaul the VA. So what can you tell us about the VA reform bill? Well, Gretchen, that is a piece of good news. Uh, the majority leader, Harry Reid, indicated earlier in this week that he was, in a sense, walking away from the insistence that we get this issue resolved. In my view, this, this issue of how we have treated veterans is so important. Uh, a leader of the United States Senate would say, we're not going home, there's no August recess till we get this issue resolved. And that didn't happen, and so I'm very critical of uh, the majority leaders uh, simply uh, indicating we're not gonna get our work done. Good news is that the senators on the conference committee, the House members on the conference committee, uh, Republicans and Democrats continue to work to resolve this issue. Uh, if the, the Senate is dysfunctional in the sense that uh, it is not being led, there is not an opportunity for ideas uh, to be presented, legislation to be considered, votes to be taken. So we have lots of challenges here, but I would tell you if we can't come together on an issue that affects uh, those who served our country yeah. and fix the problems that we've seen at the VA, uh, that really is an indictment of this uh, Democrat-led Senate. And we need to make certain that we don't walk away from this issue. This needs to be resolved in a way that takes care of those who have fallen through the cracks. And we get a Department of Veterans Affairs that has policies in place yeah. and an attitude and approach that says, we're, we're going to make certain that you can have faith and hope in the Department of Veterans Affairs. Yeah, you no, veterans, we're going to care for you. No doubt. You would think that the veterans issues would supersede politics because there are Republicans, Democrats, and independents all alike on this issue who are very concerned. Uh, Senator Absolutely. Moran, uh, keep us posted on how that does. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. So a truck